good to go. The chair notes the time is six o'clock. <laughs> I call this meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge, and as ZBA chair, I want to welcome everyone to this meeting. We will begin with the roll call of the ZBA members and panel for this uh, hearing. Steve Judge is present. Ms. Tammy Parks. Here. Mr. Dylan Maxfield. Here. Mr. Craig Meadows. Here. And Mr. John Gilbert. Present. The quorum is present. Also attending the public hearing is Mr. Rob Wachilla, planner for the town, and Mr. Rob Mora will join us later. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to observe the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access, access excuse me, the proceedings in real time via technological means. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40A, and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties at interest. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff and may be viewed via the town of Amherst YouTube channel and the ZBA webpage. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function on their screen or by pressing nine on their phone. The chair, with the assistance of the staff, will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about a project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file a decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed with the town clerk's office. Once the appeal is, or the decision is filed with the town clerk, is a 20 day, day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in Superior Court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda, consideration and approval of minutes from May 11th and May 25th. Um, public hearing ZBA FY 2023-15 Yoon Suk Song, request for a special permit under section 3.3241, converted dwellings, and 9.2, conforming structure, non-conforming structures of the zoning bylaw to convert a vacant single family residential structure to a two unit residential dwelling with a requested article seven waiver at 485 Pine Street, map 6A, parcel 38, RN, residential neighborhood zoning district and ZBA FY 2023-16, Mark Sofield, request for a special permit under section 6.3 and 10.33 of the zoning bylaw to extend an existing special permit, ZBA FY 2021-15, for a flag lot at the southeast, at Southeast Street, map 23D, parcel 57, RO, residential outline, and aqua, in ARP, aquifer recharge protection zoning districts. Uh, there will be general public comment period on matters not before the uh, board tonight and other business not anticipated within 48 hours. 
The first order of business tonight is approval of the meeting minutes, the consideration and approval of the meeting minutes from May 11th and May 25th. I've reviewed the meeting uh, the minutes. They seem to be pretty complete to me. Um, does anybody have any changes, suggestions, comments on the minutes? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve both minutes for May, uh, May 11th, I guess it is, May 11th and May 25th. Do I hear such a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion is moved and seconded. Is there a discussion on the motion? If not, a roll call vote occurs. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Uh, I will state that I was not present at either of those meetings, but I do approve, yes. Thank you. Uh, that is, the vote is unanimous, five to nothing. The minutes are approved. Um, thank you, Rob, for those the complete minutes. They're great. Um, we now move to a public hearing on ZBA FY 2023, Unsik Song, request for a special permit under section 3.3241, converted dwellings, and 9.2 non-conforming structures of the zoning bylaw to convert a, va a vacant single-family residential structure into a two-unit residential dwelling with a requested Article 7 waiver at 485 Pine Street, Map 6A, Parcel 38, RN, Residential Neighborhood Zoning District. Um, we had a site visit um, on Tuesday. Um, a couple of us were there. There was not a representative of the applicant present. Um, Rob and Mr. Meadows and I walked the site. Uh, we viewed the outside of the building. We did not enter the building and we looked at the shed which is also on the property. We observed where the property lines were, the setbacks. We have, we looked at where the parking would, we think where the parking would be um, located and where the right of way would be. Uh, we also just observed the general conditions uh, of the property and the neighborhood. And it was pretty, not much more than that. I think that pretty much sums it up, doesn't it, Mr. Meadows? I think so. And Mr. Wachella, there's not, nothing else to add to the site visit, do you think? Just quick. Yep. All right. Um, I'd like to go through submissions that we see. Submissions are as follows. Um, applicant submissions include a ZBA application, a management plan, a complaint response form, which lists points of contacts, a request for a waiver for, from section 7.112 regarding parking, uh, screening of parking areas, uh, light specifications, lighting uh, and another set of lighting specifications sample rental lease agreement window and door specifications a stormwater memo provided by furrow engineering photographs showing the current conditions uh, site for four uh, photographs site plan prepared by daniel saws land survey stamped by daniel saws the sheet one of existing conditions and sheet two of existing and proposed improvements both one dated for 1423 and one dated 22123. Also, five sets, five sheets prepared by Furrow Engineering, um, including a site layout, a photometric plan, a preliminary floor plan, existing elevations, and pre preliminary building elevations dated respectively uh, 422 and updated 530, 23, February 15th, 23, October 1st, 2020. Uh, existing elevations dated uh, February 16th, 2022, and preliminary building elevations dated October 1st, 2022, and updated May 31st, 2023. Also, there is a planning staff submission, which includes a certified list of abutters and a memo, which we received from the fire department from Captain Bascom, dated 6 6 which dealt with the requirements for safety um, under uh, Amherst um, fire regulations. So do we have, um, is there somebody representing the applicant here? So there's two uh, members in attendance. I'm assuming 
One is the project engineer, Ben Hildebrand, and the other, Kathy Song. I'm going to promote them both to panelists so they can speak, Mr. Chairman, if that's okay. That's great. All right. Let me just do that real quick. All right. And Ben and Kathy, you should be receiving um, invites to become a panelist. You have to accept it if you want to speak at the meeting. Great. Who's um, who's representing the applicant and going to speak for the applicant? Are you both going to do so? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Just give me both your name and address for the record. Go ahead, Kathy. You can start. Oh yeah. This is uh, uh, Kathy Song. Is uh, one of the owner who actually uh, applied all this special permit. My uh -huh. legal name is Unsuk Song. Yes. And your address, Ms. Song. Right, what's your address for the record? Uh, 52 Stagecoach, Stagecoach Road, Emirates. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, hello, my name is Ben Hildebrand. Uh, I work with Burrow Engineering, and we have an office here in Westfield, Massachusetts. Great, thank you. Um, why don't you guys start and give your presentation? Um, sure. We can go through it, and then, then there'll be time for questions from the board. and if any questions from the public. Absolutely, so uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Ben Hildebrand. I work with Furrow Engineering uh, and I'm here on behalf of Kathy Song. Um, I'd like to just begin by saying thank you to uh, Town of Amherst staff for helping us through this application process. Um, it was certainly a little more complicated than uh, we had initially anticipated. Um, so this property is located at 485 Pine Street uh, we are proposing to renovate a residential structure into a two-family dwelling. Uh, the subject parcel is approximately 16,000 square feet, and it's located in the RN zoning district. Uh, in general, the building is in pretty tough shape. Um, proposed work includes full remodel of the dwelling, as well as the installation of a gravel driveway um, and six parking spaces for residential use. Um, we were proposing to install dark sky compliant lighting for all the exterior lights, and we have put together a photometric plan depicting no light trespass from the property. Um, other site improvements include evergreen plantings to act as screening for trash containers and minor uh, regrading in the site to direct stormwater uh, away from the abutting properties. Uh, we are requesting a waiver uh, from zoning section 7.112 um, in regard to parking screening, and that is due to an existing right-of-way on the eastern portion of the property. Um, in general, I believe this is a positive project uh, for the town of Amherst, um, and this will give Ms. Song the opportunity uh, to clean up and restore the blighted property. And uh, we're here to answer any additional questions you may have. Thank you very much. Song, do you have anything you wish to add? Yeah, here is an old pro here. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we may have some questions. So um, I appreciate your presentation. I've got some questions and um, I'll start and then I want to make sure that the other board members have a chance to ask questions as well. Uh, background is probably applicable in this case is that uh, this there was a, a special permit application on this property last year. It was withdrawn. So I have and other board members have seen this property prior to this. Uh, we've been inside and it's in really rough. It's in really rough shape mm -hmm. uh, and it's a blight on the neighborhood currently, I would say, um, and improvement would be a, would be welcome. Um, just even just the exterior improvement would be welcome. Um, but I think um, having a taking the vacant building off, uh, taking the building and, and making it uh, occupied that's currently vacant will be a, it's a positive thing. But I've got a couple of questions. And the, and the first one, I guess, Mr. Hildebrandt, is the, about parking. Yep. Um, can you, are you able to share your screen or? Don't know. No, or maybe Rob. Rob, can you share your screen for? So um, actually, um, Ben, you can uh, share your screen if you had documents on your computer that were open. Um, sure. So everybody on this panel has the ability to share. If if you prefer that I do it on my oh. screen, that's fine as well. 
Um, well, I just have to I think open I can it. do it. Okay. Then take it but away. What I'd like to look at is the site layout plan. I think that's the one that details the driveway and well, maybe, yeah, the, the, the site layout plan details the driveway and the parking spaces, as well as the right of way, which extends down the, it looks like the east property line. Are we, am I, am I sharing the right screen right now? Yep, you're sharing your screen. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I think that's the one right there. And if you could, it's, so it'd be a C2. And if you okay. could expand that by any chance, here you go. Great. Yep. So let me see if I understand what the plan is. The plan is that um, you would enter the property up by the, right through there, and there's a, a, gonna be a, a gravel driveway that runs down along the east side of the property line. Is yep. that correct? Exactly, right, right through here. Yep. And this area right here would be for parking, these six spots right here. Yeah. And this would just be like a little turnaround so, so that the cars could get in and out, basically. And well, currently it's a parking lot on the other side of the property that I guess is the property of the Cushman Market. Yes. Um, yep. And there's so with will the gravel from the driveway run all the way to the the um, um Cushman Market property line, which also is an either asphalt or gravel, I, I forget. My my gut feeling is kind of a mix between the two. Um, but yes, it would, it would run, you know, about a foot or so off of the property line. Right. You're, yeah. There's no plantings or, any, or grass or anything along that area. So it would, you know, you know, access, yeah. and unfortunately this is a right of way through the yep. property. So it's, uh, Kathy's really limited on what she mm -hmm. can do on that yep. Eastern, on the, you know, on the Eastern property line there. And so your, your request for a waiver is from screening on the east side of the parking area or on the yes. west side of the parking area it it would be on the east side of the property on the west side of the property it's actually there's some pretty nice natural vegetation already over there and i think it more or less serves that purpose um you know to screen it from uh hitching post road here yeah the only place is the first two i think that's right i was trying to when we were on the property i was trying to locate the, par the parking spaces the first two may give light may trap uh, may travel over to the neighbors across the street uh, across hitching post in the first two um i don't think there is one existing tree there i guess but it's i don't remember if, how much of a screen it would provide for the neighbors across the street i mean we would be willing to put a couple plantings on the west side of the property if you know as a condition order condition um that wouldn't yeah. be an issue at all yeah, I think, I mean, I think you've got, depending on what you do with the um, existing vegetation mm -hmm. right. along the uh, the west, yeah, the west side of the property line, mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. So okay. um, some, some uh, trees or some vegetation, I would think something that grows quickly, putting in something that's around four feet currently and then can grow up would be, would make sense. Does that okay. make sense to you? Yeah, are you guys okay with like arborvitaes or something along those lines? We see a lot of those. Um, we also love something, that, uh, other things as well, but um, okay. you know, a, a more of a flowering plant or a, okay. you know, something that arborvitaes work, but they're just, they're not as, they don't do as much for the um, birds and bees and uh, pollinators. If yes. if you have any recommendations, um, please you know please give us a list of plantings that that would be acceptable to you, okay. and uh, and we're we're absolutely okay with that. I know Mr. Meadows sometimes uh, has some ideas on this, and so when, during his time, maybe he can give you a suggestion. Just questions. All right, uh, so that that clears that up. Thank you. Um. So. I guess I have a question for um, Rob, and this regards the requirement for under 3.3241.6, it requires a resident manager. And I know there's not one uh, currently in the management plan. Do we have to waive that, or is that has that changed under recent uh, zoning bylaws changes? 
I don't know if it applies for this specific use. You said three point, sorry, yeah, three point three two four one point six. Yep, I think that's the one I saw. I was just running through the existing um, requirements, and I thought that there was one required for this. And I know there's not. A, it's not mentioned in the in the application. So maybe that's something that we can clear up before we end before we um, move on to the. The yeah. public meeting or the, yeah, I, yeah, can, public meeting. I can look into that right now steve while, yeah, while we continue good. discussion that, that would be great um the other point i had that regards landscaping um mr hildebrand is mm -hmm. one of the things that is going to be a real but that would be a benefit to the community is to clean up <clears throat> the property it's in i know you're going to remove that shed mm -hmm. which is you know just dilapidated and and um it needs to come out mm -hmm. and you're going to have to do something with that ground that is the shed currently is on mm -hmm. and i'm assuming but where there's no landscape plan to say we're going to it's going to be you know, grass is going to cover it or we're going to put some shrubs there or we're going to do something mm -hmm. so there's no there's no real landscape plan and, and there is a requirement that there be in a, a landscape plan appropriate to the the application mm -hmm. so that isn't as you know that isn't as strict a full landscape plan but what's appropriate is something that shows us that the um, the property is going to be in better condition than it currently is. That it would be improved. And you've got some old trees that I suspect are going to are going to come down. Um, I'm wondering how you must have further thoughts than just what we see in front of us here about the landscaping. And and I wonder if you can memorialize those either for us tonight or if perhaps um, we can get a landscape plan from you that we would review at a public meeting, not a public hearing and could approve before you start construction or I mean, start yeah so i could i could absolutely put together a landscape plan for you i think i guess the way i kind of envisioned it is it would turn into more of a green space mm -hmm. so like there, it seems like there's not that big of a you know with the parking um there's really not that big of a like a lawn area um right. per se at this point so you know i kind of envisioned it kind of being restored back to grass. Uh, Kathy, do you want to comment on that at all? Yeah, actually, you know, you guys needed to see my, you know, previous project, 52 Stage Coach Road. I actually redone for the older grass for the neighborhood. And then every neighborhood is really appreciated what I, what I did. And then, you know, my plan is, um, I, of course, I'm going to make, you know, the lawn space is, um, much better condition so i think you shouldn't worry about it because you know always what i do is i want to do the correct not just like a couple of things that up that make it easy way so maybe all the town of amherst the person will know me you know i'm actually always follow the what you guys suggest and make things pretty not that just the making money so i want to just make things clear i will give you big promise I will make it really shiny and beautiful so no worry you know I love to plant things and then uh, it should be easy to maintain for the tenant but you know we will do best well that's a nice I, I like that response um, I think maybe a good thing would be to come up with a a, a landscape plan that you could submit uh, I don't want to hold you up for this. I mean, I want you to be able to get started. My goal is not to delay the application, um, you know, our, our disposition of this application tonight because of that, but that you come up with a landscape plan that you can then send to uh, the send to the board and we can look at it at a public meeting. We don't need to have a public hearing at it. And we can do, if you do that over the next couple of weeks and we look at it before, prior to your, to occupancy, that'd be helpful. Yeah. But I'm not looking I'll for I'm How about, you know, I have the landis uh, landscaping company that I always work with. So maybe I can just ask him because he's going to do it anyway. So I can just make things official for the town of Emmons. Yeah, yeah. That would be great. Then we have yeah. something to look at. That would be great. Thank you, Ms. Song. That would be perfect. No problem. So what we'll do is we'll make a, if you will agree, I would, I'll suggest that we have a condition that you submit a landscape plan to us um, from your landscaper. And that we we can review it at a public meeting, uh, when, but not at a public hearing where we have to take a lot of time. Okay. All right. All right. Um, 
And I also, the other question I have is, is the current siding on the house. Some of it looks like it's clabbered and some of it looks like it's either a, a tile or an asbestos or I, I don't know what it is. And number one, have you, if it's asbestos, have you determined that it's asbestos and how are you going to take that down and not affect all the, the public coming through Cushman Market, which is parking right next to that? If it is indeed asbestos, it's got to be handled carefully. So can you talk to us about that? Yeah, actually, I didn't actually um, get the right person. I didn't find the right person yet about to, you know, finish it up the uh, siding. But I needed to ask, can I actually double layer up, like uh, instead of tear down? So maybe we will inspect it, of course, you know, from the inside, because we are going to take off the, all the water because it's a smell is just insane. So we yeah. can't use any of them, actually. So we can actually tear down from the inside which means we will see the really uh, outside of the, what is a plywood. So maybe we can inspect from there. So if nothing is, you know, major damage there, then uh, can we actually double layer with the, you know, vinyl? Is it possible? You know, that's, that's gonna really be a quest, question we can't answer, Ms. Song. Uh, I can't anyway, um, on the, from the board, that's really gonna be a, uh, a building site, a building commissioner answer or the, um, about about that, but I was talking. So you can you'll have to work with uh, the um, buildings department and Amherst about what's the correct way to deal with the interior. Um, if you have some asbestos interior, I'm thinking the siding on the outside is what I'm looking at. It looks to me. Like <coughs> I don't know if you've made a determination if that's. Here. So that's just. I think that's. You may you may want to talk to I don't know who's going to do your work, but you're going to have to I think you're going to have to determine if that's what is the um, composition of those those yeah. um, clavards on the outside. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So I I did look into that point that you brought up earlier about um, three point three two four one um, number six for converted dwellings. So in regards to the resident manager that you'd mentioned uh, and Rob Moore who's on now can back me up on this or correct me if I'm not correct on this but the way I interpret the language it looks like if it's already a building that's developed for multifamily use you have to have either owner occupancy or resident manager and I don't know if that applies in this situation because it's only a two family unit and not more than two. Um, Rob Mora if you are able to speak to that as well if i'm correct on that um that we greatly appreciate it. but that's that's how i interpreted that section just now as i was reading it you know rob, I, think you, I think rob is he's on but yeah mr Moore is, is muted mm -hmm. so let's we'll go back to we'll get his opinion when he um, comes back okay that'd be good um, let's see. Those are most of my questions. Um, I'll turn it over to other members of the, of the panel. Mr. Meadows. Um, thank you. I, um, have the same, um, question that you alluded to as far as the parking is concerned. Um, given the way that the parking is for the Cushman Market, where they seem to park along the right of way, um, might it be better to, to move those parking spaces back towards where the storage shed currently is so that when they turn out of there, there's a lot less chance of uh, of the parking that might occur for the, the Cushman market interfering with your tenants um, entering or, es or exiting from the parking spaces. Mm -hmm. Do you see so, any problem with doing that? Well, so you're saying move it down this in this direction? Yes. Just want to make sure uh, I'm understanding you correctly. That that's correct. I'm just a, a little concerned that there might be a bottleneck uh, with cars coming in and your cars trying to get out. Um, oh, like in this location they, right here. 
Exactly. They come in there and they park, they park along the side of the market mm -hmm. yeah. on the opposite side, yeah. closer to the house. Um, of course, that could be some signage might take care of that, but but they're the corner of the market is closer to where those sparking right, spaces yeah. are anticipated to go right now. If they were moved farther down towards where the, sh the shed currently is, uh, that might avoid any bottleneck. I, I believe that that might be helpful. You know, I, I think it makes sense to leave this parking, you know, closer to the residential structure here. And what that does for Kathy or for the residents is it gives them a little more room here to have that green space and that lawn. And, you know, I think it's something, honestly, that Kathy, you know, the, that the neighbors are just going to have to work out amongst themselves. Um, maybe at some point, you know, there is some sort of a barrier or signage or something along this property line um, that kind of delineates, you know, where these residents can park and also where customers for Cushman Market can park as well. Yeah, it, if that's the case, then I think you you will need to put some signage and some barriers there. Okay. Yeah. And as far as the there is no natural barrier between there's no natural barrier between the the property Ms. Song's property and the Cushman property. I mean, it just it flows one up to the other. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Meadows. I'm sorry. Uh, well, Rob wanted to ha had a comment. Yeah, I oh. think he wanted to make. Go ahead, Rob. I just had a question in regards to parking. So, I was looking through. Um, the management plan, the site plans that showed the number of parking spaces and the rental policy, so the lease that was submitted with, as well with the application. Um, and I had a question because it seemed like in the lease and on these plans, there's a different number of parking spaces that are indicated and allocated for each unit. According to the lease, it was four total and then two per unit. And then here, it looks like it's three per unit and six total. And then I understand that there's no guest parking on the site. I understand, like I know there's guest parking and public parking nearby, which people can use, but not specifically on the site. So am I correct in saying that it's gonna be six total spaces, three for each unit? That's yeah. correct. So we okay. had we had met, we had an initial meeting uh, with mm -hmm. the board. I think we had we had initially called out four spaces. So mm -hmm. I think that's where that discrepancy is to the okay. lease. Yep. And they you know, in that initial meeting, uh, they suggested we add, maybe add a couple more spaces mm -hmm. uh, just based on the number of bedrooms um, in the units. And <laughs> when we had space on the site, I thought it made sense um, not to limit this parking. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we went with six so we can update it on the lease to reflect okay. that. Mr. Chairman, can I ask that that be like a requirement for uh, an additional meeting or something like that to, to provide update uh, lease agreement? You know, they can if they can submit it to the uh, we, they could submit it to us an updated lease okay. parking and it's the same situation with a, a public meeting where we review it and unless it's it's uh, significant there's no need for a public hearing on it. The other comment I would have is that I, I think given the condition of the property anything you do is going to be a vast improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're going to do any plantings, please. Uh, use pollinators um, as far as the types of uh, vegetation that you're going to uh, plant. Okay. Uh, Ms. Parks. Well, I was going to say that because parking is tight there, I wouldn't mind if you added more parking. Only because you are probably, if if it's going to be students and there's going to be eight students living there, or there's eight bedrooms, you're they're going to have eight cars because it's not close enough to walk to the college. I don't know where the closest bus stop is. Oh, um, it's the front of a house. Oh, there's a bus stop in the front that goes to UMass. Yeah, I mean it's a literally front of a house. <laughs> okay. I just, um, I guess my concern with properties like this is that people start parking in the front yard and the side yard they park it's like they do a lot of creative parking in order to fit cars in and so I appreciate that you want to have green space but I do know that you know this is kind of a parking lot next to a parking lot 
So I would not mind seeing more parking spaces. It won't make me, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that there's six rather than four. I just, um, I guess I would say, I hope you're flexible in the future that if creative parking is happening, that you create more spaces so that people don't start, start parking in the front yard or using Cushman, you know, as their, you know, apartment parking, which can so, happen. Absolutely. I think that, I think that's a great comment. Um, so we do have the room to expand the parking in the future if need be. Um, but I think it makes sense to kind of keep it as grass for right now. Um, and it like, and in the future, if we need to add, you know, two or three additional spots here, we'd certainly have the, the space for it. Yeah. I just think it keeps it, keeps the property looking. I mean, even though it's a lot of parking, then people mm -hmm. won't do the creative parking thing right. and end up blocking Cushman or end up taking Cushman spots. Yeah. And I'm also happy to see the siting change. Any improvement to the property would be very nice and having people live there would be very nice. Yeah. And so, you know, and having nice landscaping, improving that uh, that building that a lot of us see often would be great. Thank you, I'm all done. Oh, thank, thank you for your comments too. Um, Rob, why don't we uh, restate the question we had for Rob Mora um, regarding the resident manager? Yeah, sure. Um, hopefully he has a zoning bylaw nearby so you can look this up real quick. But um, so for converted dwellings, I believe it was section 3.3241, um, number six. So it states the need for on-site management of like a resident manager. And the way I interpreted was that that only applies if it's for an already existing multifamily structure converted dwelling not for a two family. So I just wanted to make sure that's correct because Steve brought up that question earlier in the meeting about whether or not the board would have to waive that requirement or if they have to have it for this project specifically. So <clears throat> that's that's a mandatory requirement. The board cannot waive it. it, it either, okay. The converted dwelling and this by definition, even though it's only two units is a converted dwelling either has to be owner occupied or have a resident manager as we define it in the bylaw. Those are the, the only two options. And that resident manager can be one of the tenants that's appointed by the owner as the resident manager, correct? But it would have to, you'd have to have an agreement with one of the tenants. If you did that, you'd have to have an agreement with one of the tenants to be the resident manager. That's correct. Okay, so that's a requirement under uh, the zoning by the current zoning bylaw. Okay. okay. And I suggest that um, be made a condition as well when we get to that stage. Yeah. And the other thing, Mr. Moore, I just wanted to bring up to speed on. Um, we were talking about both um, the parking and as well as the uh, landscaping that the um, Ms. Song and Mr. Hildebrand have said that they would um, provide a, um, a more fulsome landscaping plan. Um, and they would also do some, we have to update the lease on parking. And what I wanted to do is have that be submitted subsequently in the next in a short time. Um, and we come back and review it as a public meeting as opposed to a public hearing. And not have to. I don't want to. If we decide we want to go ahead and approve this tonight, I don't want to hold it up just for those two things. So that's, that's approve that the um, uh, a planting and a, uh, the updating the lease and have it reviewed at a public meeting. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's fine. I would just add, you know, um, just for the timing purposes, you know, prior to the issuance of a building permit or something, if it is indeed something you're hoping to have, come back relatively quickly. Yep, that's what we do. Exactly. Prior to my building permit. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Other other comments from board members. Other questions. Let's see. Mr. Chair, a few comments I'd like to make. Absolutely, Mr. Gilbert. Yeah. So uh, you know, in in 
walking through the application report, I understand that with this as a you know sort of non-conforming lot, there's some challenges on the side yard and the overall lot area. Um, I just want to state that um, from from my side, I, I don't see those as uh, being substantial issues with respect to you know retaining the the building and it's basically in its existing form, renovating and uh, adding one more unit in there. So I, I don't see those as um, as, as significant issues. I do, however, have an issue with the um, the request for a waiver of the landscape screening, um, I guess like, you know, adjacent to the parking area, uh, specifically because of this lot's location adjacent to, uh, you know, a, a marketplace, basically a, a place of business. Um, you know, taking a look, as has been mentioned, there's really no delineation between Cushman and this property. And, um, you know, if we're suggesting that we're going to have six cars back there, um, basically parallel to the driveway of Cushman Market, where they have, you know, a variety of parking spaces back there. I think that this is uh, something that we would absolutely want to delineate um, and, you know, have slightly screened um, to, to, to make a clear separation between these two lots. Um, one other comment I'd like to make about the siding I had heard. Uh, the applicant mentioned maybe attaching vinyl siding over the existing siding. I would absolutely recommend that that is not the case. Um, I think given the condition of the building, you're going to want to rip all that off. Uh, you are going to want to make sure that the uh, building wrap underneath, uh, you know, is <laughs> is not breached, and um, you know the overall envelope of the building is in um, you know a, a decent condition as you. Uh, you know, apply your your vinyl siding and, and as such. Again, as Mr. Judge mentioned, that's more of a comment for, uh, you know, the, the building commissioner and et cetera. But I would um, highly suggest you to uh, consider that moving forward. I think that's the approach that you're going to end up taking. Mr. Gilbert, can I explore more with you of the idea of the 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 buffer between the Cushman parking lot and the parking spaces on the property. So sure. what we've got is we've got a, a right of way that runs down that property line as well, um, down through here. Yep. And I guess along. Yep. Along there. How do we, how would you envision screening the parking places? Cause it would be in that right. away. I don't know if you can do it in the right of way. Maybe you have to do it in the, the in the, uh, on the applicant's property and then move all those parking spaces a little bit farther to the west. What, the what's the dimension of the right of way? What is it? I believe it's five feet on either side of the property line. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's exactly right, right, but it's somewhere in, in that. Um, in that realm. Yeah, so if we're yeah. talking five feet, uh, do we have an indication as, and I think, uh, Mr. Chair, you, you asked this question earlier. I might be mistaken, but do we have an indication how far the prop uh, the uh, driveway is offset from the property line currently? It's off. It's property? offset one foot. One foot. So we would have to push it basically an additional four feet in order to accommodate. So what uh, what is preventing us from doing that? It's my question, Mr. Hildebrandt. So absolutely, uh, we could slide that whole parking structure over. Um, I think what we are trying to do is just preserve some green space on the lot and, you know, not make um, everything gravel. Um, but we could absolutely slide everything over if, if that was a condition on the board. Uh, I would I would recommend as such, um, as long as there's not, you know, significant detriment, it seems like to the existing building location uh, by, by pushing that over. Yeah. I mean, to be to be frank, I think that the green space is really accommodated for in the rear. Um, and, you know, if we're maintaining six spaces here, uh, as is suggested, um, you know, not adding the, the seven to basically one per bedroom, then, you know, we, we, we do have, um, I think, significant green space as is. I think that's also kind of, you know, the challenge of these non-conforming lots, of course, and part of the reason from a zoning perspective why you know, these uh, adjustments want to be made for, I think, 26,000 square feet, et cetera, is the case to make sure that that's maintained. But I think looking at the lot as is and the existing conditions, um, I think that's still, you know, satisfied satisfactorily. 
So we'd, we'd actually be pushing it, you know, that four feet plus whatever that landscape buffer is. So let's just say it's two feet for right now. So we'd be sliding everything over six feet and that would, you know, put us, you know, almost past halfway through the property for a parking lot. Yeah. Or for a parking area. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, any thoughts on that uh, for you? I, I don't know. For, for me, that makes, I think it I solves, two, I think it solves two problems, Mr. Gilbert, uh, that I mm -hmm. was struggling with. One is how do you differentiate or delineate, you're using your words, the two parking spaces, which naturally flow one to the other. And I could see the difficulty that Cushman would have and that the property owner would have trying to keep this, those parking areas from, mer from going back and forth. I can see customers, you know, parking right up against the, the, the tenants of that building too. So I think that makes, it solves that problem. And it does then also call for, uh, it increases the need for some screening for those first two or three um, parking spaces. So you're not shining car lights into the neighbors across the street, across the nice. uh, kitchen post road. I think that solves some problems. So I, if the, if the applicant is willing to do that, um, that would, we can make that, a, we can make a condition that they come back that the, uh, before occupancy building permit, we get a new parking uh, uh, layout from the- and, and that could be submitted as part of um, the the landscaping plan package. Yep. Okay. You know, Absolutely. Well. It could be, all be together and not have right. to- yep. Have a meeting. Okay. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that at all. And if the, if the tenant or if the applicant wants to expand that a little bit in order to um, accommodate Ms. Ms. Park's concerns, they can do that at that time as well, or say future parking or, or some way to delineate it. Okay, so you guys would be okay with like a little strip of landscape buffer kind of right in this area here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I still think you're going to need some signage so that you yeah. don't end up with uh, patrons of the Cushman Market coming and parking in those spaces. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, they won't. It's not without that and without the buffer. It's not clear that that's not parking for Cushman. The other yeah. problem is that the the back entrance to Cushman is right about the fourth parking space. So if you walk, if you want to go into the back entrance of Cushman, you, you, that place is, um, you know, it's it that looks like a parking place for Cushman, and I can see where people could mistake it or or just pop in there quickly. Okay, Miss Parks. I was just going to say, when you were talking about the screening, the screening should be on the Cushman side, but you won't be, there also needs to be some additional screening in front of the first couple of uh, spaces facing hitching post. Yeah. Yeah. So right. Right. In this area, yeah. 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 Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. It's really blocking the headlights from, from hitching post. Sure. Yeah. I think it should be there. Okay. So, um, We've got the, we've gone through uh, the uh, landscaping and the parking. Are there other, are there other questions that, yes, Mr. Wachilla. I have two really quick questions, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. So the first one deals with uh, trash pickup. I know they have those three bins at the rear of the building. Um, I just wanted the applicant to discuss how, um, you know, logistically a trash uh, vehicle is going to get back there and, and take those bins. And then, um, or whether they just wheel them to the front and that's how it's done. And then the second question I had is uh, for the floodlight they're using for the parking area, um, would they be motion sensor? Um, that's all I had. So the way I kind of envision this is that these trash receptacles are the one, you know, on the wheels mm -hmm. and they're dragged, they're drug out trash day to the end of your driveway. Mm -hmm. I think it makes the most sense. Okay. Um, and then as far as, so this is the photometric plan here. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I was thinking more of a timer, but it could be on a timer and a, a motion sensor. Uh, okay. Do you guys have any preference to to what you'd like to see? My preference would be the motion sensor because mm -hmm. you know a timer you could have somebody coming in when it's when it's off, but a motion mm -hmm. sensor and a motion sensor means that it's not on when it doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. so that's my preference. I don't know if other members of the board have a different preference. I'd be in agreement with that. Yeah. Okay, you'd want to see it on a motion sensor? Yeah, I mean, I think it's more efficient and it also provides 
you know, the, when, when you, it's on when you need it, and it's not on when you don't. Okay. Um, let's see. So you haven't decided yet on the clabberts for the outside, that, but that's not, not really our responsibility to decide that, but um, that's something you're going to have to come up with. And then those, the, front, the, the stairs in the front and the stairs in the back, as well as that that um, porch on the first floor at the back of the house, is that going to remain? Are you going to redo that? So that's if you look at the floor plan, it's the, so, so yeah, there's a, that that porch looks like it's in. I don't know if you're going to have to redo it or, you're, or what you're going to do with those two stairs and what you're going to do with that porch in the back. So my just my gut feeling with this property is. Um, most of it's got to go, um, you know, including the siding. I, I don't, I really don't see a way around it. Yeah. Um, I think once you start taking it apart, you're going to find you got to take it all the way apart. Yeah. And it's the same thing with this deck up front here. I think it's in too tough a shape to to rehab. I think at the end of the day, you're going to be way better off, you no, know, you taking do. it down and then putting it back up. Um, everything meets Massachusetts building code, current code. So, um, yeah that's just my gut feeling with the property but until you start you know that demo process it's really kind of hard to to say exactly what you're going to do out there yeah you know? okay and you all have it's all got to be built to code and it has to if it's it's not i mean i can't imagine how those stairs would be, could make could be made it, to, to exactly we go we go through the building department uh, you know yeah. after any approvals through you guys so okay let's see is there anything else that i had yeah. Any other questions from members of the board? All right. Any other comments from um, the applicant before we go to public comment? All right. Um, so for members of the public who wish to comment on this application, this is your opportunity to do that. Um, if you would so wish, you can raise the rate use the raised hand function on your screen or if you're on by phone you can press nine and we will and uh staff will bring you in to our, our meeting it looks like we don't have anybody you don't have anybody that you see rob do you nope no hands okay um so if there's any other questions from board members or any other comments that um the applicant would like to make at this point before we go into our public meeting portion. Great. So, um, what I would do is, we're, I'm, I'm, without objection, we're going to move into the public hearing, public meeting portion of this hearing. That's typically not the time for public comment. It's the time for the board to deliberate. Uh, we're keeping the public hearing open in case we need to get additional information from you or from the from either you know, from the public or from the applicant. So this is the chance principally for the board to discuss this amongst themselves. Um, so I'll give you my impression and then we can talk about it. First off, you know, I think it'd be a great service to the community and to the neighborhood to have this property fixed up. And I like Mrs. Song, Ms. Song's representation of what she wants to do with the property and keeping it looking nice and, and, and I guess with the other property you make, I think that's that's a that's a positive a very positive thing. I've been in that property before and it's really in bad shape. Uh, and I, you're taking on a challenge and I can I, I congratulate you for the work you're going to be doing. Uh, and I know it's going to be hard work. So um, thank you for that. But I think there's some a few things we'd like to do from this and that, that we've talked about. My feeling is that the landscaping, the planting, um, screening for the um, the headlights, as well as the, the differentiation between the parking spaces, perhaps moving them, providing some uh, spaces for future expansion of your parking. If you do have indeed more than three cars for your tenants, they could, you could find something because you're not going to want them parking in the Cushman place. And we don't want to have it spilling over into the neighborhood if we have sufficient room to do that. Um, but you're going to need to have a resident manager and you can work with the town to do that. Um, and you, that should be in your management plan. I think you should be have it included in your management plan. So a condition that we need to have is that the management plan is amended to include the 
the provision of a resident manager unless you have an owner occupant in the building, which I, I don't think you haven't mentioned that that's the case. So you're going to have to do that. Um, and you have to update the lease on parking. So I'm inclined to think this is a, this is a benefit to the community and the neighborhood, but, um, I'd like to hear from other members. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I agree with all the comments you've made there. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, uh, pending some of the comments that were made here, um, uh, you, you know, and, and a response basically from the applicant addressing those, um, I am in agreement. I mean, this is a, this is a blighted property. It's right next to a highly trafficked, um, let's say beacon, you know, of, of uh, North Amherst, that being Cushman Market. And, um, you know, improving this is, is absolutely in the benefit of the community at large. Mr. Maxfield, I see your hand up. Yep, I was just also going to jump in on the. Uh, I think this is a, a very good project. I remember when we we visited it, uh, what maybe a year or two ago. Really seeing the bad shape. It was. Uh, it seemed like it was going to be a tough sell, but I'm I'm glad that uh, somebody's taking it on, and uh, I think this is a good project. So I'm I'm currently at this point definitely in favor of uh, what we're looking at here. Thank you, Ms. Maxfield. Any other comments? Ms. Parks? I agree. All right. <laughs> you got it. Mr. Meadows, you mentioned that before in tonight's hearing, so I'm assuming you're you're good with this as well. I certainly am. All right. Are any other comments from um, either of our two Robs, Mr. Mora or Mr. Wachilla? Any staff guidance? Okay. So what I'd like to do then is um, go through the conditions first. Uh, we'll go through conditions that were uh, we wish to impose and then that I think allows us to make the findings we are we have to make because those conditions um, those conditions help us make the, the way we can make the findings is if those conditions are compliant with so let's start with conditions and what I'd like to do as I've done before is we'll go through all of these and we'll try to approve them and and block but if somebody has an objection to one of these conditions Raise your hands and we'll pull it out and we'll vote on it and just and decide it separately. All right, so the conditions are to start, we find those in on page, I guess it's 13 of the project, the draft project application report. Mm -hmm. Yep, so the first, it's actually on, starts on 12, but the first pro, uh, condition is the, the boilerplate. Uh, you gotta build it as you have, um, submitted the paperwork and it's all listed out all of the different plans that have been submitted and you got to comply with that. There's modifications to your lease. We'll talk about those later on, but, and there's some modifications that we need a landscape plan, but, and, and modifications of the management plan, but you got to comply with the, um, what you've submitted. Number two standard, um, expires on change of ownership. And then the, the new owner has to come and we, we approve the management plan. This is standard with all of our rental properties. The leach agreement, lease agreement has to be updated to match the management plan for six total parking spaces. We've discussed that, so that's got to be done. All rooms should be used as labeled in the, in the floor plan that you submitted. The, we want to make sure that the enclosed porches are not used as a bedroom. Sometimes students will be uh, creative and um, uh, use places that are not designed, use as bedrooms, places that are not designed as bedrooms. And so that we want to make sure that that's not the case and that it has to be registered as a, under, under the Amherst um, rental program, registration program. Um, the approved management plan shall be followed by, by the property owner and any changes to the plan shall be returned to the Zoning Board of Appeals at a public meeting. Uh, no more than four unrelated individuals shall occupy each unit. That's all exterior lighting shall be downcast and dark sky compliant. You need street numbers for book dwellings. Parking shall occur on improved purpose, uh, surfaces only and be maintained as needed. Parking areas shall be clearly delineated. We've talked about that. Individual parking spaces shall be painted, marked, or otherwise delineated in a manner sufficient to visibly identify said spaces. Total number of persons per dwelling unit is limited to 10 or total number of persons per dwelling unit is limited, limited to 10 or fewer people at any time. This limit is total and shall include lease residents. 
leases and residence, unless written permission from the lesser or landlord property manager is granted for a specific number of persons. So it's not to limit a large amount of, so as to limit a large amount of people on the property, any gatherings shall be coordinated so not, so as not to coincide with any gatherings held by the other unit of premises without written permission from the lessor, lessor's agent. Um, so that's in your lease. Overnight stays for any guests are limited to four days in any consecutive 30 day period or 14 days during the lease term. Maximum number of overnight visitors shall be two people at any time. The property shall, re shall register with the rental program be subject to periodic inspection. And upon renewal, the applicant shall submit to the building commissioner. Again, this is standard boilerplate commissioner up to date complaint and violation log report with the Amherst Inspection Services. Um, we've also talked about some other. So the landscaping, uh, you're going to come up with a, a submit something to us. One of the things you should include in that is like the schedule for how often you're going to cut the grass. Do you cut it when it gets three feet or three inches or four inches, or you're going to cut every two weeks? Just give us some kind of a, normally our landscaping plan has some kind of a, a schedule. So either it's a, a height or a time schedule uh, for the grass and that you take care of the trees will be replaced, that kind of stuff. That's typical landscape plan. Um, You know, you've asked for the waiver. You've asked for a waiver of section 7.112. That's the landscape screening. And we've talked about how in lieu of the waiver, there's a need for screening. So we're not going to, I'm not inclined to grant that waiver. I think that we should use the screening. Um, and then Rob, you had mentioned in this, uh, noted in your possible conditions, location and number of doors and windows that would be installed on the building. Um, it seems to me, I don't know if any of those windows uh, and doors are going to be, can be kept, uh, quite frankly. And um, from the drawings, it looks like you're not going to change the wind, where the windows are placed or where the doors are placed, but you're talking about, it looks to me like you're talking about replacing all the windows. So I, yeah. I guess, is that what you're intending to do? Yeah. So window is already ordered. So every single window will be replaced and then also doors. Good. Okay. I think that satisfies the concern that was raised. Good. Um, so those are the conditions. Um, in addition to that, so we talked about putting planting by the, um, to block the lights, putting planting to, on the rear, on the east side of the parking area and on the, and on the west side. Um, Updating the lease regarding parking, you're going to need to have a resident manager and uh, moving parking, yeah, and a resident manager. So um, what I'd like to do is combine those three things into a condition that says prior to a, a building permit, you submit something to us and we'll review it at a public meeting. We won't have to hold up the process of approval or special permit for that. Okay? Okay. Great. Are there any other conditions that, that I forgot or that members want to want us to consider so mr chairman just to clarify you want them to um bring to the zoning board at a public meeting the updated lease with the number of parking spots corrected you right. want updated um, do you want updated plans that show where the plantings are going to go yeah okay so that's going to be on the western portion of the parking area facing hitching post road and then on the eastern portion near the right of way blocking from Cushman's market Okay, and then did you also want to include language in there about signage towards the entrance yeah. of the driveway to indicate each uh, where the Cushman's going to go? They, I guess in this case, they're going to put signage that shows the parking for the residential lots, correct? Yeah, I think that's a good okay. catch. I okay. Good catch. Right. Am, I, am I missing anything from that? I just want to make sure I get this down correctly. I think that's right. Updating the lease on, on the parking uh, and and then updating the management plan with the residential manager. Okay. And um, yeah, Ms. Parks. Oh, you're, you're muted. Can they just put up a private parking sign on, on the residential side? I guess I'm just wondering what the signage, what you're hoping the signage will look like, but. Yeah, I, think, I don't think it has to be very much more than a sign saying parking by for residents only or something like that. Yeah, that's what I think. 
private parking could work too. I mean, uh, would, would it be, make sense just to leave it up to the applicant to decide what type of language makes sense for them? Yeah. Okay. And then, okay, location. All right, got it. Okay. I think we got it all. All right. So if there's, unless there's other suggestions, I would entertain a motion that we approve these conditions and block. So removed. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion on the motion? All right. Uh, if not, it's a roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. The vote is five nothing. The vote carries on the conditions. So based on the, con the approved conditions for the at this application, I'd like to go through the findings that we have to make, that we're required to make for, um, for this. So the first is I, I want to reject the, um, the parking uh, landscaping uh, screening waiver that was requested by the, the, uh, the applicant because we, we've dealt with that in the condition. Um, and the, the findings we have to make are start with um, section 9.2, 9.22, which is in in this case, what we have to decide is that we can grant a special permit, a non-conforming use of a building, structure, or land to be extended or a non-conforming building to be structurally altered, enlarged or reconstructed, provided that the authority, us, the ZBA, finds that such an alteration, enlargement, or reconstruction shall not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming use or non-conforming building. I think with, I think we can clearly find with the, um, with the improvements made by the, the applicant and the conditions to the special permit that we will be not less detrimental to the neighborhood than it currently finds and we can meet the requirements of 9.22. We also have um, the, our typical Article 10.38 findings we have to make. The first is that it is 10.380 and 381, that it's suitably located in a neighborhood. Um, th th there are single and two family residents in that neighborhood along Pine Street, and so this fits into the character of the neighborhood. 10.382, 383, 385, and 387 all generally deal with nuisance and um, um, to the neighborhood, in either noise, dust, vibration, lights, or visually offensive structures. Um, I think that they've taken um, care in, in this, as well as we impose conditions that will reduce any light pollution, that will, I think, in, um, benefit the community. And I, I think we can find that we have met the requirements of 10.382, 383, 385, and 387. 10.384 requires adequate facilities would be provided for the proper operation. Um, they have, they've got um, enough room to, to create um, uh, a place that for seven, a structure for seven bedrooms. And you're gonna be on um, town, town water and town sewer, right? So you have those facilities. So I think 10.384 is requirements of 10.384 are met. 386, um, Parking and sign regulations, we've dealt with that through the conditions. So that's been met. 387 deals with uh, safety vehicular traffic. I think we've improved the uh, safety of the vehicular traffic by the uh, conditions we've imposed in the separation of the parking lot. 10.388 uh, is not applicable. 10.389, um, we, we, you, you, there's a proper way to deal with the uh, disposal of, of refuge and trash. And it's been that should be in the management plan. Uh, Ten point three nine zero. The proposal ensures protection from flood hazards. It's not applicable. The proposal protects to extent feasible natural, historic, and scenic features. You know, I think Cushman's Market is is probably historic and and but it's not. It, it, and I think this will help to protect its value. And it's it's um, but it's not really the put the purview of the committee. So it's not really valuable. Although we all love Cushman's Market. Ten point three nine two. Um, with the conditions that we've imposed regarding landscaping, I think we've, we've uh, provided for the landscaping, the necessary landscaping. So I think we meet 392, 10.393, 10 
is again protection of adjacent properties by the intrusion of lighting. I think the screening on your uh, lighting plan does that to, to accommodate the and meet the requirements of 10.393. 10.394 um, is not um, void steep. There's no steep slopes. It's not really applicable. 10.395 is the does not create disharmony with respect to the train and use. Uh, that's not applicable. 10.396 deals with screening for storage areas, dumpsters, rooftops, equipment, etc. You've got a screening for the trash, so I think that's you've met the requirements of 396. 397 deals with recreational facilities. You there's sufficient open space, but it's, it's housing is not really a uh, need for applicable. Uh, it's not really applicable in this case. 10.398 and this proposal is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw and the goals of the master plan. I mean, this provides from no housing or housing of just one person for a number of years to providing housing for up to uh, eight individuals. I think it provides and and, meet, and starts to meet some of the need. There is an underlying need in town for rental property and this is indeed that. So I think we have, I go through here and I think we've met all the requirements under 10.38. 10.3 and then I think also under 9.22 which are are the only things we have to make findings on if I read it correctly I don't think we have to make any findings under three and Rob and Rob can correct me if I'm wrong so unless they do um, are there, is there any discussion about findings from board members if not then I would entertain a motion that we approve that we make those findings in block um, and block so that we don't have to go through each one do I have such a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded. Um, is, that, is there any discussion? No discussion. The vote occurs on the findings. Um, the chair votes aye. Ms. Parks? Aye. Mr. Maxfield? Aye. Mr. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Vote was 5-0, um, unanimous so that we make, that we make those findings. Um, being that there is no other business on this matter, I would move, I would entertain a motion that we um, approve the special permit for um, this application. Let me just get the exact one. We approve a special permit under section of, Converted sections 3.3.3.3241.4, and 10.38 for uh, ZBA, where is it? ZBA FY 2023-15, and that we close the hearing and public meeting on this application. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Unless there's any discussion, the vote occurs on the motion to approve the special application with conditions and to um, make the, and to um, uh, make the make the findings that we make and to close the public hearing and meeting on this. All those in favor will say aye. Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Mr. Meadows. Aye. Mr. Gilbert. Aye. The chair votes aye. All right, motion passes unanimously. You guys have your special permit. Um, congratulations. Good luck, Ms. Song. I think you've got a big job Thanks, in front sir. of you. Um, and please keep the, uh, get those things into the building commissioner's office so we can look at them and do that as soon, sooner rather than later. We don't want to hold you up uh, for your, your building permit, but we do want to see those um, changes made. I will right. also send uh, an email tomorrow to Ben and Kathy um, with the requirements that are needed. And then I'll also outline the special permit process, what happens afterwards. Um, usually we have to render a decision document with the board signatures. And then there's a 20 day appeal period. So usually in this 20 day appeal period, uh, you're free to start pursuing building permits for other areas that aren't governed by the special permit. But just keep in mind, somebody from the public can appeal this decision from the board. So of course, I'll send the email to you guys tomorrow and then um, explain the process further to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. All right. Th thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. you. Thank you. Great. All right. The next item on the agenda is 
ZBA FY 2023-16, Mark Sofield requests a permit, special permit under section 6.3 and 10.33 of the zoning bylaw to extend an existing special permit, ZBA FY 2021-15, for a flag lot at Southeast Street, map 23D, parcel 57, RO, residential outlying, ARP, and aquifer recharge protection zoning districts. This was a special permit that was granted in June of 2021, and the applicant has requested a renewal of that special permit. Um, my understanding is that these special permits, if there's no substantial effort made to comply, uh, expire after two years. This special, this renewal would give them an additional two years. So, uh, Rob, is the is there anybody representing the applicant on? There is. Uh, I think. Mr. Sofield is PSF projects. Um, okay. I will make that person a promote them to panelists so they can speak on behalf of their extension requests. So they just have to accept the invitation that's sent to them. Sorry. Yep. That's all right. And before we go there, I just want to make sure that we read, read all the into the record, mm -hmm. the appropriate um, submissions. There was not a site visit. There was on this case, we uh, it's just a, a renewal of a request for a renewal. The submissions include a FY 2023-16 application, uh, which includes a boundary line that was dated April 20th, 2021, topographical plan, a plan showing two parcels of land, and then there's planning staff submissions, which includes a previously approved special permit decision and a certified list of abutters. So those, and we don't have any public comment on this, do we, Rob? There's been no public comment submitted, okay. So those are the list of the, the list of the submissions. So uh, this, I would turn to the applicant. Um, please give us your name and address, and then you can just tell us why you're looking for an ex a renewal of the special permit. Uh, Mark Sofield, 1339 Southeast Street, Amherst, Mass. Uh, this is a property that's been in my family um, since 1974. And uh, at my mother's passing um, four years ago, it was passed down to uh, me, my sister, and our her two sons and my daughter. Uh, the it's our intention to sell the property. Um, there's actually an interest, interested buyer in the property um, on this attending this meeting, and. Uh, Obviously, to do that, we would need to renew the, the special permit. Got it. Okay. And the reason you just hadn't sold it yet, and that's the reason you need to re renew. That's the reason. There wasn't any construction to decide um, that was planned for the property. It was just the flag let itself. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, the only reason we have a two year limit at times is because we don't want things to extend on and on with and never get done. But um, this, that's typically a problem with construction and not so much a problem for something like this. Right. Uh, yeah, but is there anything else you need to, you wanna say? I, I did have one question. I found out um, yesterday. So at the request of the potential buyer, I have um, been trying to, uh, get an understanding of the cost of the site development for the lot because it's a flag lot. Um, there's a long driveway. And uh, there are no existing utility stubs from the street up into the onto the property. Uh, and I found out yesterday from um, the estimator at Carl's Excavating, who is working on a uh, budget for us, that there's a moratorium on street cuts on Southeast Street until 2025. Um, apparently the, the street was paved, um, last paved in 2020. Although my wife and I today were trying to remember if that actually happened on this portion of the street. Um, but in any case, uh, if the potential buyer is not able to hook up to the city sewer, until 2025, because of this moratorium on the on the cutting into Southeast Street, I was wondering if the 
two year period for the special permit renewal could be extended um, at least until um, the moratorium is lifted. You know, Mr. Um, Sophia, you're, this is above my pay grade. <laughs> I don't know the answer. Yeah. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn right. to uh, Rob and Rob. Um, maybe Mr. Mora can respond to the, number one, the question, the existing curb cut limitation, and number two, some <laughs> thoughts on longer than two years special permits and see what he says. Yeah, so um, I, I I was trying to look at the map, but I, I haven't figured out yet if, if it is in fact in an area that is subject to the moratorium. But in any case, that is the standard requirement. Uh, and I would encourage you to talk to the Public Works Department about, uh, you know, exceptions or, you know, any alternative to possibly being able to make connections during the moratorium period and if the location actually is subject to it. Uh, so that's um, that's would be my best recommendation there. Uh, the board cannot grant an extension longer than two years. So um, it actually is something that's permitted under state law if we adjust our bylaw, but we have not adjusted our bylaw to be able to do that. So the, the maximum is two years. Of course, another extension could be sought if needed at that time, and the board could consider that request for an additional extension. Uh, prior to the two-year expiration. I was also going to add that um, condition six in the original permit from 2021 also states that the permit shall expire two years after the fact anyways. So you can't really go around that language to begin with. I mean, we have to keep that in mind as well. So we're limited to two years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Other questions? Or uh, anything else, Mr. Sofield? Uh, no, that was my only question. Uh, questions from board members. Ms. Parks. So is it, so uh, does the town recommend that we extend this for two years? And if there is a moratorium, then it will just be another extension rather than leave this and then wait two years? I'm just trying to figure out pr procedurally how the best way to do this for the applicant. You know, my, my feeling, uh, I'll leave it up to Rob to tell me if I'm wrong. Um, my feeling is that it's gonna be easier for the applicant if we extend it for two years now and then extend it again, rather than ha forcing the applicant, not extending it now, and then forcing the applicant or the new owner or, or the applicant and the new owner subsequently to have to go have another special permit and start fresh. I think the extension would be easier than starting fresh again. It seems oh, to me. Yeah. Indeed, I, I do not want to, I, it's obviously easier to renew than to reapply. So You're correct on that, Steve, by the way. <laughs> I would much prefer that. All right, good question though, Ms. Parks, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Let's see if there's any public comment. Not seeing any hands raised. I see no hands raised. Um, any further questions from board members or comments from the applicant? If not, without objection, I'd like to move to the public meeting portion while keeping the public hearing portion open just in case we need to uh, gather additional information. Um, my thought on this is that this is pretty simple that we provide this extension. We don't have to make any other findings. We don't have to do anything except to extend it and the existing conditions that are in the, the uh, current special um, permit will continue to flow forward, <laughs> including the two years ex expiration. So it seems to me this is something that we should do for the applicant and we just renew the, renew the uh, special permit. So moved. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. All right. So we got a move and second for the approval of the request to renew the application. And the motion is to renew the application, the special permit, as well as to close the public hearing and the public meeting on this matter. Um, it's been moved and seconded. 
If there's no discussion, there's a roll call vote. Chair votes aye. Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Mr. Meadows. Aye. Mr. Gilbert. Aye. Vote is five to nothing, unanimous. The motion carries. You've got your additional two years, Mr. Sofield. Very good, thank you. All right, that's great. Um, there's no further applications before us. Next order of business is public comment on any matter not before the board tonight. This is a chance for the public to speak on anything except those matters that were before the board tonight. If there are no hands raised and I see none, Rob, then I think um, we can move on to new business or any business not anticipated in the past 48 hours. Um, first off, Rob, what do we have scheduled next? Um, so for the, the next meeting in June, which would be June, what is it, June? 22nd. So um, yeah. as of right now, we do have one hearing scheduled. It's for a uh, modification to an existing special permit. The address is 408 Northampton Road. Um, I forgot the name of the apartment complex or condominium uh, building that's there, but they're just trying to change a few conditions in their special permit. Um, and then there's also a request to discuss with the board a public meeting in regards to a art mural. Um, it's for, it, it was a special permit approved for, I think it was a dispensary called Herbology, but they're called something different now. Um, I forgot their name, but of course Classic that information, piece. sorry, there you go, Rob, you got me, uh, Pleasant Trees, um, yeah. pretty clever name in my opinion, but those are the only two things coming up on the 22nd. Um, nothing for July yet. I haven't heard any permits are upcoming in the books for the first July meeting. Um, so I guess since I have all the full members here, um, as you may know, Dylan and Tammy are both leaving at the end of the month, uh, letting their terms expire. So Dylan and Tammy, I don't know if you both want to be included as panelists for that meeting on June 22nd. If you prefer that I leave you both out, you know, you can let me know now, you can let me know later. I figure I would ask since I had everybody here, if you both would want to um, serve as panelists for that meeting. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can start. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely willing to serve as a panelist for that final one. Neither of those we sound like they're going to extend past that meeting. So, um, yeah, I've already put in for that that day off, so I am available. I don't want to miss out on my my last meeting. <laughs> That's good news, Dylan. We don't, we don't want to miss you either. We want, to, <laughs> we don't want to make sure we have one more day, one more meeting with you. How about you, Tim? Um, you if know, you, you're busy. I know, and so I don't want to. I, I don't want to put pressure on you. But if you can, yeah. great. Not, we understand. Yeah, I. Uh, I mean, it. Uh, it. Uh, it breaks my heart to be leaving. Um, however, uh, next the next meeting is difficult for me as I was going to rush back from New Hampshire in mm -hmm. order to come to the Z, to attend the ZBA meeting. Um, so if I don't have to do that, um, I would not mind having that uh, pressure removed from my life. Well, considering all the times that you have uh, dutifully <laughs> participated in all these meetings, I think we can grant you this easily for your, and this can be your last CBA meeting, although we, we hate that it's happening sooner than it has mm -hmm. to be. Uh, you certainly do a, a day off. <laughs> I think I've only missed two meetings in the, in the, yeah. how many every years, the right. three plus the extras. <laughs> yeah. I think it's been since Tammy, it's been since 2019, hasn't it? Since yeah. The, yeah. I think it's been since 2019. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's been great. And, you know, I have many wonderful things to say about you all. And I, I want to especially say that Rob Moore has been so helpful and supportive and so brilliant and, you know, thank you so much. You're a benefit to the town. Rob, thank you for stepping into Maureen's shoes. That was so, we were really worried that, you know, it, she was irreplaceable and you're doing a really spectacular job. Really appreciate you. And I just want to throw out also that Dylan, I really appreciate you because from the previous board and other boards that I've seen, one of the things that you brought to this this board was um, 
like saying, how is everybody feeling? And, you know, which way are we leaning? And just kind of, um, instead of being really officious, really getting to the nitty gritty of where we were stuck. And it's really been helpful. And I think it really has made this board more efficient. And Thank so you. appreciate it. And, uh, and Steve, you know, you're, for me, you're very generous and um, uh, honorable to all of the people who are speaking, even if we've heard the same points before. And I, and I, and that, I think it's really important that you hold that space of being really kind and generous and open to people speaking. I mean, when people are coming here, when the public is coming to this board, it's very intimidating. And so to have someone who is actually listening to you and hearing you and, and appreciating you is in good. So I really appreciate um, what you've done. And, you know, I'm happy, I'm very happy to serve with you this whole time. And Craig, you know, you're my partner in crime. I'm sorry I got you to be on the dab. I, I, I apologize for all, all the things I've done. <laughs> I will find a board or something to coerce you into going to. <laughs> I've already been invited to join some other boards. I'm like, just not now. <laughs> but now I really appreciate it. This has been really fun for me. And, you know, it's been a, a just a really unusual experience. Uh, you know, and John, you're bringing in an expertise that we don't always have. So I appreciate you as well. And, you know, and I don't, I hope the public knows that everyone here is a volunteer. This is what we do for fun. I mean, really. <laughs> <laughs> that's saying something about us. I don't know. Yeah. Fun. fun yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty amazing that you have people, you know, just a random collection, somewhat <laughs> random, who, you know, who make this thing yeah. work. So, I really appreciate it. I appreciate Amherst for that and I appreciate this board. So well, I'm sorry. Really kind of... <laughs> I'll be around. <laughs> Those are really kind remarks. And you've been a great help, a great member. I've enjoyed working with you a lot. And you brought a perspective that we didn't always have. And I appreciate it uh, very much. And we'll miss you. Uh, maybe when, and I, I don't think I'll still be around, but when you have time again, you should come back and serve. I don't, I don't know that I will. <laughs> We'll still be here, but you'd benefit the town in any in any service that you give. So thank you. Thank you Thanks. very much. Thanks. And I hope to see you all around town too. Yes. And Tammy, right. I, I, I just want to jump in as well and say it's been an absolute pleasure serving with you on this. I uh I, I also really enjoyed the perspective that you brought into this whole thing. Um I I, I really like that we got to serve our uh, our terms together, kind of uh just, just side by side like that. It was uh an interesting experience going through the uh, the pandemic with you right from start to finish of the whole thing on the uh, on the board here and uh, I'm glad we got to serve together and you know no know, knowing that you're going at the same time is, is gonna make it a little bit easier on me to go to it's like ah, it's not even the same board anymore you know <laughs> but you're gonna be on another board right I I'm still gonna be on board of licensing that one has uh, a little bit more a little bit more flexibility in it um and its timing is right before i would go into a uh, an appointment for work and they usually are only about 45 minute long meetings so it's it's a little bit more something i can can keep on the schedule <laughs> well good yeah I, I mean i hope everybody keeps serving i mean it's you know it's a good town to serve and it's it's everyone's perspectives that are important and so, it's only, it only works out because people like you, Tammy, and everybody else on the board are willing to put the time in, dedicate some, some time in their life to, you know, to benefiting the town. I don't, and people don't always res understand that and they don't respect it as you alluded to, but it's really important. And I think all of you, and Tammy, you're the epitome of this, all of you have done, ex are doing a real service to the town and it's benefited them a lot. And we should, I thank you all and thank you, Tammy. All right. Okay. Great, guys. Anything else for the new business before we adjourn? Uh, my, I, I just have one quick question here. Yep. John, are you John and Craig? Are you guys going to be at the next meeting? Yes. Uh, that was the twenty second, correct? Yeah. I believe I have a conflict that evening. Okay. Uh, yes, June twenty second. Yeah, I am unavailable, unfortunately. 
Well, in that case, then I, I'm just going to, you're not going to get my, my full goodbye that I'm giving everybody on my <laughs> last meeting. But I, I also just want to briefly say, John, it was uh, wonderful serving with you. You are, uh, uh, I, I can't put it any other way, a, a very brilliant guy. Uh, and I really enjoyed what you've, you've brought to the board. Uh, it's, uh, it's only a shame that, that we can't get more of you over here because uh, you, you, you really bring an expertise to it that's, uh, that's much appreciated on the board. So it's been a pleasure serving with you as well. Yeah, likewise, Dylan. Thanks a lot for you know, all, all of your efforts. It's been fun bumping into you sort of outside of uh, the ZBA <laughs> screen here and there in town. Yeah. And uh, stay in touch. Uh, I'm still around the area, so it'd be great to uh, reconnect with you. And also, Tammy, you know, extending this out your way. Thanks again for all your effort. It's been a real pleasure serving alongside you. I think, you know, we, we've got a sort of ragtag group here and we all bring very valuable perspectives, I think, to all these projects. So it's been great working, you know, with the both of you as well as alongside everyone else here. Tammy, I will give you the opportunity to make the motion that we adjourn. You can do it and <laughs> you can do your last, you've got a last motion if you want to do it. So moved. <laughs> Is there a second? Take the second. All right. This motion is not debatable. Uh, it's a roll call vote. I vote aye, regrettably. Um, Ms. Parks. Aye. Mr. Maxfield. Aye. Mr. Meadows. Aye. Mr. Gilbert. Aye, aye. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank Thanks you. You bet. Appreciate it. Thank you. See you around.